Odd how much polish a, polish a film series can undergo over the course of two years. The first installment in the Yakuza Papers series of films came out in 1973. This film, the final installment of in the Pentology, came out in 1974. Kenji Fukusatsu was already an accomplished director when he made the first film, but over the course of two years, he came up with a very distinctive style very quickly to this series. Final episode is probably the most polished film in the series. The action scenes are still shot in hell and held as a sort of proto shaky cam, but unlike in earlier installments, the shake has been toned down enough where the action can be easily tracked. There's also a lot more composition in this film, that the shots are framed incredibly well, and the film does some great work with reflections, particularly the sunglasses of this film's pro main protagonist, Tamotsu Matsumura, who's played by Kinya uh, Kitoji. The film picks up a little after the conclusion of Police Tactics. Once again, Bunta Sugawara is back as Shoza Hirono, but he actually spends very little time on screen in this film's installment. Instead, the film follows Matsumura, who is the second-in-command of the Tensai Coalition, a political organization formed out of Hiroshima's Yakuza families in the wake of the events of the last film. Akira Takeda, the head of the coalition, who is played by Akira Kobayashi, is intent to keep things quiet and just let business run its course, with the organization slowly making its way legit to keep police pressure down. Unfortunately, the best-laid plans of mice and men often go astray, and when Shozo Hirono's sworn brother... Terokichi Ichioka, played by Hiroki Mats Matsukata, who is the boss of his own gang, gets out of the joint. He decides to throw his weight around, leading to a civil war within the coalition. This leads to Takeda being locked up earlier in, early in the film, and now Matsumura, who is young and thus doesn't have the respect of the older generations of gangsters, has to rein in a major city's worth of Yakuza who are itching to fight another war. While this film certainly has its action scenes, the focus here is more on the political maneuvering among the various factions and serves as an interesting mirror to the first film. Hirono was listless and without a place following the events of the Second World War and came to the Yakuza for purpose, a sense of agency, and an sense of empowerment that society denied him. During the events of Proxy War and Police Tactics, the Hiroshima Yakuza swelled their ranks with fighter, fighters as the various sides were started openly going to war with each other. Now, though the Second World War ended, people mustered out of the military. You can muster down an army. You can't muster down an organized crime family the same way, even if you've won. So, now, the Yakuza of Hiroshima are stuck in a situation where there's a rank and file that joined because they wanted to fight, not because they were drawn in by the glitz and glamour of the Yakuza lifestyle and the money to be made, they were joined in because they were fighters, they were tough, and they wanted to fight, and they're, now they're craving the next battle. Meanwhile, the higher ranks are so distant from the fighting, and in many ways much more safe than the people at the ground level, that they're willing to throw away their lives to their subordinates for a quick power grab, thus creating a situation where violence and bloodshed is bound to happen again. And this is particularly notable in the form of the character of Hideo Hayakawa, who is the biggest Karma Houdini in the series, who has managed to avoid both long jail times and being whacked by his fellow Yakuza over the course of all five movies. And this leaves the Yakuza, who are more reserved about being of doing violence, like Hirono, Matsumura, and Takeda, forced into bloodshed because Hayakawa just don't care. This leads to one of the aims of the series that Fukus Fukusatsu and the writers of the of the films, Tojini, all right, Koji Takeda and Koichi Iboshi, I apologize for mispronouncing names, were, bre were aiming for, to break the mythology of the noble gangster. Aside from the second film, Hiroshima Deathmatch, where he was not really present, Hirono has meshed almost perfectly with that archetype. He's tough and able to do violence as needed without being a deranged sociopath, and he keeps to the code of the Yakuza, even when he's better off not doing so, and triumphs because of it. You could almost say that the first and third films uphold that archetype. But what Police Tactics last time, and final episode this time, highlight is that in the grand picture, that archetype is meaningless. Sticking to that ideal denies you agency and renders you powerless to, as compared to those who are not willing to hold to that ideal. Conniving bosses will throw your life away if they outrank you, and will manipulate your belief in those ideals if they are your equals. 
violent underlings in your organization or others will draw you into unnecessary fights no matter how hard you try to get them to change their mind, and particularly if they are uh, extremely violent or if they are cynical or sociopathic, you can't necessarily get them to believe in the code of the Yakuza in the same way that you do. And so again, you're getting roped into fights that you don't want to get into and getting your hands covered in blood that you can't avoid doing. And this is highlighted most of all in, pol uh, in police tactics in this final episode. You're going to end up hurting your civilian that you and the Yakuza as a whole has built all this mythology around you protecting, and eventually they will get sick of you and they will want you to go away. And when that ha time happens, it comes, there's nothing you can do about it. This film, and the series, wraps up with a metaphorical indictment of the Yakuza as a whole, making it clear that this cycle of violence and murder, once started, can't really be stopped. As long as the Yakuza can exist, the cycle will continue, and the only way for this to end is for either the Yakuza to give up the life and leave the life entirely, or get locked up. As a conclusion, the end of the Yakuza Papers pentology feels more resonant than the crime doesn't pay endings of Scarface, where crime doesn't pay because you'll die bloody, or Angels with Dirty Faces, where crime doesn't pay because you'll be caught and go to the chair, these two films being two of the more, most iconic films in the gangster film genre. And this is both, this is only fits with either version of Scarface, but at this point it would have been the 19th. Uh, 30s pre haste code version. In the Yakuza Paper series, crime doesn't pay because you're going to be unhappy and miserable. It's not a case where, oh, you think where you may die or you may get arrested. Those are things which, if you, someone be, chooses to become a gangster, you kind of know going in. But there's still the mindset of, oh, the, gang, the life of a criminal, of, gangst, of being a gangster, the, a Yakuza in this case, is seductive and attractive because of the money, because of the power, because of the glamour. But the glamour is just a veneer. Ultimately, Shoso Hirono and the other protagonists of these films, they don't end up happy. Even the ones who survive, then they're and they're miserable. They spend their day. They will spend the rest of their days haunted by the ghost of their subordinates who died on their watch. No matter how clever, how savvy, how strong, how powerful you are, you're not going to be happy as a gangster. Which is, I think, a more resonant and more real sentiment to express and. Thus, does a much stronger job of shattering the mythology of the gangster than really any of these other films have done. So, this concludes our little coverage of the Yakuza Paper series. Next time, eh, it's been a while since I talked about a cookbook. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, if you want to go see what I reviewed previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you a mention in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that and back the show. Also, 
backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everybody. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.